Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Sounds fun, right? But what are the repercussions? Wild behavior takes a toll on your body. That includes sleep deprivation. When you deprive yourself of sleep, your body can experience symptoms similar to those as if you were using drugs. And champion poker player Phil Locke knows all too well about sleep deprivation. He actually went after the Guinness World Record for the longest continuous poker session. Have a look. In 1999, I learned the game of poker, and by the year 2000, I was a full-time professional. I wanted to get the Guinness Book of World Records for uh, the longest session of poker ever played because A, it would take a check mark off of a childhood dream, and two, realizing that I actually had an honest and fair shot at maybe getting it, and three, I uh, thought I would raise some money for a uh, charity that I like to support. But in the back of my mind, the biggest reason was can I do it? Can I push myself to that spot? It's an incredible physical toll on your body. I didn't have any idea what I was getting into. Not only did I not ever go to a doctor, I also foolishly didn't poke around on the internet to find out what the effects of long-term sleep deprivation would be. For my body, basically, I was gonna go to the gym all the time. For six months prior to this enduro session, I was eating slow-burning carbs. When I started preparing for this, I weighed 211 pounds. The day I started to break the record, my weight was 185, and strangely, five days later, I weighed 180. At hour 90, I had a 15 to 20 minute hallucination where I thought I was in somebody else's dream and I thought I was in France. So from hour 95 or 114, there wasn't one minute where I wasn't anything less than 100% alert. And I realized, look, this is not safe. And I just said, that's it. I, I decided to pull the cord at 115. <laughs> After getting the Guinness Book World Record for the longest poker session ever, I noticed marked changes in myself. Emotionally, I'm a stronger person. I'm able to feel deeper. I'm able to love more, if that makes any sense. I'm gonna sleep. So now, when I go to the gym, it's never for the vanity aspect. It's always for endurance. I love living so much. I just want to last as long as possible, you know? Wow. And here he is, <laughs> the Unabomber Lock. And, and I actually have to confess, I wasn't sure why they called you yeah. the Unabomber until oh, yeah. I saw how you Anybody looked when you played. Anybody who knows for sure. Well, they give you well, a it's an impressive outfit. Awesome, I like man. it. Yeah. 115 hours, and that's without any tea or... Nothing. In fact, uh, I, I went into it thinking a week before, I mean, six months I had been training, but in the week before I started thinking, okay, well, when I get tired around hour 40 or 60, all black tea and whatever, and my trainer was like, no, 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 you don't want to have any tease whatsoever, no but I he had a slow release capsule of caffeine that he said, I'll give you this when you start really getting tired, it'll be much better like slow release. And I just I don't know, something happened where uh, since it was on the I was on the edge of doing it and people thought, oh he must be on drugs, whatever. I said, no, get, I had my publicist get a doctor. And I said, I'm not even gonna do the caffeine. <laughs> the hardest part is getting through the hump of massive tiredness, which is between like hour 45 to 60, somewhere in there to like hour 75, 80. That was like, it was almost like a 20, 30 hour like hump. But once I crossed that, the adrenaline was so supercharged that not even a click of tiredness entered my body.